The year was 1912. Martinez was a small town with a population of less than 2,000 and an economy based on agriculture and fishing. It was a sleepy town. Main Street would not be paved for another six years. Mustaches, stiff collars, high top shoes, Edison phonographs, motor cars were all the rage. Henry Ford, R.E. Olds, and others had put America on wheels, signaling a new age in transportation. The new age in transportation meant a need for fuel. Shell decided to build its first refinery in the United States in Martinez, California. In October of 1913, Shell purchased 368 acres adjoining an existing terminal for 144,000 and began construction. Teams of horses sculpted many of the steep Martinez hills in preparation for the refinery building. Plenty of handwork was required in digging foundations for the refinery process unit. Industry was booming in the area and there was not enough local residents to staff operations. New people moved into the area and housing was in short supply. Shell built houses for staff on the hills above Escobar Street. Later they would build homes in the Brown Street area. Real estate men and local landowners combined to open new residential tracks, including the first subdivision in Martinez, just west of downtown. Operations and maintenance people were needed. People had done construction and showed an interest were offered jobs. The refinery had over 600 employees. Less than 12 months after construction was started, test runs were done. The refinery was running 20,000 barrels a day, which was a sizable operation for 1916. In this picture of the Shell Wharf, barrels of oil can be seen alongside sailing ships. The next few years at the refinery passed with additional units being built as operations expanded. World War I began and ended. Charles Lindbergh made the first transatlantic flight and on October 20th, 1929, the stock market crashed, plunging the country into a devastating depression. Martinez was changed too. In 1930, the railroad bridge between Martinez and Benicia was opened. New stores, even a library sprang up in the downtown area. But these days would soon end. War was once again on the horizon. Two years before the conflict began, Shell was doing research in the Bay Area on a new fuel for airplanes. This picture of the flying lab is shown flying over Martinez. The first production of a new powerful airplane fuel was at the Martinez chemical plant. It increased the power of an airplane 15 to 30 percent. During World War II, a few years later, this would provide just the boost pilots needed to win such conflicts as the Battle of Britain. By 1942, the Second World War had spread from Europe to engulf hundreds of millions of the Earth's population on every continent. The Martinez refinery played a part in the war effort Along with aviation fuel, Martinez manufactured specialty lubricants that were widely used in the effort. As men went off to war, women entered the workforce. At the height of the war, women held about 20% of the jobs in the refinery. Following a costly and bitter struggle, World War II finally ended. Soldiers returned home from the war and began pursuing the American dream. Part of that dream was owning a car. The interstate highway system was funded in 1956. Between 1945 and 1960, the number of cars in the United States doubled to over 61 million. The change could be seen in Martinez when in 1962, the bridge carrying automobiles from Martinez and Benicia opened. In five years, gasoline sales through service stations had increased 80%. The refinery was not prepared to meet this increasing demand. An expansion was announced in 1963. It would use the latest technology and control systems and be known as Light Oil Processing, or LOP. The site was chosen and can be seen in this picture where Howe Road and Pacheco Boulevard intersect. These pictures were taken each month from about the same location during the construction process and show the visible progress. 
Over two million cubic yards of soil was moved as part of the site preparation. Vessels were lifted, the largest being a 480-ton reactor over 100 feet in the air. This is the celebration of the completion in 1966. The startup would prove challenging and last well into 1967. In the early 1970s, a new term entered the U.S. vocabulary, energy crisis. The crisis was the result of the number of worldwide events, but the bottom line was that gasoline was in short supply. This photograph was taken in downtown Martinez in September of 1973. Shell announced that they would build a flexi cooker at the Martinez refinery to convert heavy materials such as asphalt and fuel oil into increased gasoline production. The units would be known as OPSIN. Construction began and the units were started up and running in 1983, but less than 10 years later plans were made for another major project at the refinery. In response to growing concerns about air quality, federal and state regulators developed new standards for fuel. The clean fuel projects kicked off in 1990 to meet this challenge. In this picture, a 100-acre clean fuel site is prepared for construction. The construction project took three years and cost $1.2 billion. The completed processing units came online in November of 1996. The Clean Fuels project was the last major project completed at the refinery, but smaller updates and upgrades continue, such as in 2010, modernization of the cat cracker. A lot of things have changed in the last hundred years, technology, fashion, the world order, society, and frankly, Shell's attitude about our community. 100 years ago, the attitude was that the community was lucky to have Shell decide to build a refinery here. Now we know we are only here because the community allows us to stay. We can expect a lot of things to change in the years to come, and these things we cannot even begin to imagine. But the one thing that will not change is our commitment to being the very best of neighbors.